All right, time for some Chapter 5 reviews, some logarithms, and some exponential functions, starting with some composition functions here. So this f composed with g, first thing we need to do is write this as f of g of x. Actually, f of g of 2. So we've got to figure out what f uh, g of 2 is first. So g of 2... Plug that in to the function uh, g up here. And plug that in. Plug in 2. We get 2 minus 5. And that's a 5 there. And that's negative 3. So we know that f of g of 2 is just f of 3. Actually, negative 3. So we substituted that. And so now f of negative 3 is going to be negative 3 squared minus 3. Just plugging it into the function here. And that's 9 minus 3, which is 6. Um, G composed with f of 2. Again, first step is to rewrite this as g of f of 2. And this just helps us see that f of 2 is inside of g here. So first thing we need to do is we need to figure out what f of 2 is. So we're going to take our function over here, which is x squared minus 3, and plug in 2. So we get 2 squared minus 3, and that's 4 minus 3, which is 1. Plug that in for f of 2 there. So we get g of f of 2 is really just g of 1, because f of 2 is worth 1. And now I use the g function, which is x minus 5. And so we have 1 minus 5. 1 minus 5 is 4. Negative. So we get negative 4. And now how about f of g of x? or f composed with g of x. So this means f of g of x. Now since it's in terms of x and not a number, we just have to take g, which is x minus 5, and we're going to plug that into f. And you might even find it useful to rewrite this as f of x minus 5. So x minus 5 is what g is. So we look at our f function here. Our f function is x squared minus 3. So let's write it as kind of with some big blanks. So it's blank squared minus 3. It's the input squared, leave some space, minus 3. And what are we putting into the function? Well, we're putting x minus 5. The x minus 5 goes into the function here. And now it's just a matter of simplifying. Okay, there's the function right there. x minus 5 squared minus 3. Let's see actually what the, the instructions say. Instructions don't even necessarily say to simplify it. So, you know, we could leave it there. That would be an acceptable answer. x minus 5 squared minus 3. That is, let's write that as f of g of x. So this would be an okay answer, but uh, we'd kind of like to simplify it. So to simplify this, we can square this out. x squared minus, well, we have plus 25. We square, square the first, square the last, multiply and double, and we get minus 10x. And then this gives us x squared minus 10x plus 2. That's probably the best answer there for f of g of x. And last one, g of f of x. g composed with f. So rewrite it. g of f of x. And now let's go ahead and substitute, take g, 
And we're going to put g, put f inside of g, and f is x squared minus 3. Now, add g, the function g is x minus 5, which is big blank, minus 5. And so, in this case, the big blank is filled with x squared minus 3. And cleaning it up, we get x squared minus 3 minus 5, which is minus 8. Okay. There is the inverse, or g composed with f. All right. Next question, do these guys have inverses? Well, to find out if they have inverses, they have to pass the horizontal line test. So wherever we draw a horizontal line here, whoa, okay. Wherever we draw a horizontal line, we're always gonna cross through one point. So since here we always cross through one point, this has an inverse. Next one. Check with horizontal lines. Well, it is a line itself. Whoops. And so, yeah. Wherever I draw a horizontal line, it's going to only cross through in one spot. So this guy has an inverse. And this one does not have an inverse because we can easily draw a line that crosses through one point. So it doesn't have an inverse. And the reason is because it doesn't pass the, the horizontal line test. Which just means that it's not one-to-one. One-to-one. One. So one-to-one one means that for every x is one and only one y. And for every y there's only one x. So it's not one-to-one. One. That's what the first two were, one-to-one. One. This one is not. Going to find some inverses here. So to find an inverse, we're going to write it in terms of y, or just rewrite it as y instead of f. Then we're going to switch the x and the y around. x equals one third y plus four. And we're going to solve for y here. So we subtract four, we're going to get x minus four equals one third y. And then let's multiply this whole thing by 3. And that's going to leave us with 3x minus 12 equals y. And so there's our function. So the inverse of f is 3x minus 12. That's our inverse function. Okay. Let's try that again. Let's write it in terms of y. And rewrite as y instead of f of x, that is. Swap the x and the y. x equals y squared minus 6. Add 6 to both sides. We get x plus 6 equals y squared square root. And we get uh, y equals technically plus or minus the square root of x plus 6. Now this is not a function because of the plus or minus. So uh, the graph of this would look like this. Oh, let's see. Okay, and this is not a function. So not a function. And the key is that it's not a function, so it can't be an inverse function because it's not even a function. One more inverse. Write it with a y instead of f of x. Swap the x and the y. And solve it for y. Add 1. Divide by 2 everywhere. We get x plus 1 over 2. And then let's take the cube root of that. And we get y equals the cube root of x plus 1 all over 2. And that is a function. Okay. Uh, 
right, so we could say f negative 1 or the inverse of f is the cube root of x plus 1 all over 2. So now we're going to evaluate some logarithms. So if we're starting to get the hang of this here, then we might be able to evaluate them pretty directly here. Uh, but it, uh, it, it's always good to rewrite them in exponential form. So remember, the key connection is that the log base b of x equals y. If we have that, then we can rewrite this as uh, b to the y equals x. So this base swings around there. And we can go back and forth between these two things. Okay, so if this equals y, then we're saying 4 to some power uh, is equal to 16. We can rewrite it. And pretty clearly that power is 2. Okay, so log base 4 of 16 is 2. Okay, rewriting it in exponential form. Just real important that we can just go back and forth here. This is x to the m equals 3. That's it. Nothing to do with it. Now, if it's a natural log, this is the same as log base e. Okay, and so that e is the base. E is a number. It's about 2.718. So e to the q is equal to p. There's our solution. Okay. Rewriting this in a logarithmic form, we're saying that uh, swing the base around. 4 is equal to log base 3 of 81. And it's a very true statement. So this base is, the base is m. And so that becomes log base m of r is n. And this is saying that R is the power we put on M. Sorry. Uh, N is the power we put on M to get R. That's what we have here. N is the power we put on M to get R. So that's the idea. Uh, using a calculator to approximate these, we're going to use our uh, OR change of base formula here. So a change of base says that this is going to be the common log or the natural log of 40 over the common log of 2. And those are both ones we can put into our calculator. So we type that into our calculator there. And using our calculator, we get about 5.322. All right, using our change of base formula here, we have uh, log of 8. Actually, let's let's mix it up a little bit. Let's try natural log of 8 and the natural log of 1 third. So remember, the 8 goes on top, 1 third, so the argument goes on top. The base stays on bottom there. So we figure that out, punch in our calculator, and we get about negative 1.892.
That is an irrational number. Well, let's go do some graphs now. So graphs, we need to understand some basic exponential and some basic log graphs, all right? So if we have 2 to the x plus 3, well, first of all, this plus 3, when it's outside, it's after the exponent there, that's going to move it up. So anytime we add or subtract after we do the function, it's going to move it up or down, okay? Plus moves it up. So um, we remember that uh, when we have 2 to the x, we have any exponential function, that function is going to look something like this, or if it's a one half or something between zero and one, we're going to have exponential decay. All right, so it's going to be, it's those are our exponentials. They have a horizontal asymptote. Okay, normally the horizontal asymptote is the x axis like this. However, when everything moves up three, we have an asymptote at three. So, first thing to do is get our asymptote at three, and now we can, let's see, let's get some numbers. You want to always label your axes. Get at least one number on the axes. Let's, let's go like by ones there. So now this is our asymptote here. So treat this like zero, zero. So zero, zero is this guy right there. Okay, and now we should be thinking y equals, okay. so we got thinking y equals two to the x. That's what we're thinking about now. Now, y equals 2 to the x gives us a point at 0, 1. So thinking of this, treating this as the origin, 0, 1 would be right here. Okay? So notice I'm not, I, I didn't put the plus 3 in here now. So I'm forgetting the plus 3. I'm going to imagine that this is the x-axis, all right? And this is the y-axis like it is. Ignore the negative 5, because this we're thinking of this as 0, 0. Okay? So it gives us a new frame of reference. So when we're graphing 2 to the x, we get that there. And then when we enter um, 1 there, 2 to the first is 2. So if we go to the right one, we're going to go up 2. Okay? Again, treat this as the origin. So we're going to go right 1, up 2. Normally, we put 2 here. 2 squared is 4. So, from the origin, 2, 4. There's our point there, not there. There. And it would go up, up, up from there. All right. And then we're going to go uh, to the left. We should be familiar with this, hopefully. Half, a quarter, an eighth. And it's going to get closer to the asymptote, but never touch it. So our asymptote here, by the way, was y equals 3. Horizontal asymptote for exponential functions. Okay, if we have a logarithmic function, well, we saw that logarithmic functions are flipped. They're an exponential function that's flipped. So it's going to be something like this. And uh, they always go through two special points. They're going to go through the points. Uh, what are those special points? One, zero. Because for no matter what base we have, the log of 1 is 0. Okay, log base, whatever. And then if, if our base is B, okay, our base is B. Well, the, for a general function of log base B, when we have, let's see, log base B of X then that's always going to go through the point b comma zero okay so b comma sorry b comma one okay because if i put b in here then log base b of b is one all right well those are useful points we know kind of what the general graph will look like and so we can graph this thing now we could say, I know it's going to go through 1, 0 because it hasn't moved at all. We don't have any pluses or anything like that. All right. So, we don't have any plus or minus or anything like that. Now, the base here is E because this is a natural log. And E is about 2.718. And so, about 2.7. So, if we go 
to 2.7, we're going to be up at 1. So that's right about there. All right. So 2.7. Well, let's try that again. So go away there. So we get a function here. And we know what the general graph looks like, so this is good enough. Let me make this a little bigger. All right, that's good enough. Okay. Now, by the way, I forgot to, I don't think we talked about this in class, but if you graph this on a, a graphing calculator, you won't see this bit that goes down here. On Desmos, you'll see it, but you won't see this on a graphing calculator that goes down like this, okay? So, uh, but it's there. And you know, we've talked about why it's there. So, there we go. There's our log function. One more. If we have log base 3, it's going to be about the same shape. And this minus 5 here, anytime we add or subtract in the parentheses, that's going to move it left or right, and it's always opposite from what we kind of expect. So negative five is gonna be right five. Now, we have a horizontal, sorry, we have a vertical asymptote. This right here is a vertical asymptote. So it's never gonna to touch this y-axis. So when we move right five, that asymptote moves right five. And the whole graph's gonna move right five. Gonna be slightly different shape, but one, two, three, four, five, there's 5, and here's our asymptote. So for logs and exponential graphs, we always should draw in the asymptotes. Okay, and then we know that since this is log base 3, that's what we're thinking about now. Forget about the 5. Treat this like the origin. It's going to go through the point 1, 0, and uh, 0. Nope, my bad. 3, 1. So the base, comma 1. All right, now, we're going we're gonna to think of this as 0, 0. It's not. It's actually 5, 0. But we're going to think of it as that. So if this was 0, 0, then 1, 0 would be right here. 3, 1 would be right here. So there's two nice points to identify. And there's the graph right there. Okay, that's how we graph those log graphs. Time to solve some equations. So solving equation, exponential equations, we're going to change into logarithms. And logarithmic equations, we're going to change into exponentials. So this guy, we're going to swing the base around. This is log base 2 of 16 equals 3x. And we, get, we know this. What is the power you put on 2 to get 16? The power is 4. So this is 4 equals 3x. You can also use your change of base formula with your graphing calc with your calculator. And divide by 3 and we're done. x is 4 thirds. All there is to it. Then we have, swing the base around, x is log base 3 of 15. Now this is not one we know, so we're going to need to go to our calculator and do a change of base, and that's going to be natural log of 15 over natural log of 3. So this right here is the exact answer, log base 3 of 15. We can use our change of base to get the approximate now, and that is about 2.465. And another exponential here. Got to get that exponential all by itself. So we subtract 3. And we get 5e e to the x is 4. Let's divide by 5. And we get e to the x is 4 fifths. Now we're going to change this into a logarithm. Swing the base around. And we get log base e of 4 fifths. We have a special way of writing that. That's our natural log of 4 fifths. And there is the exact answer. 
and we can go plug that into our calculator and get the approximate answer and that's about negative 0.223 so exponentials we change into logarithms if we have a logarithm we're going to change this into exponential so we're going to swing this around and we're going to say 10 is equal to x to the third well now this is an equation that looks familiar it's now got an x cubed well the opposite of cubing is a cube root so we can take the cube root and we get the cube root of 10 and that is the exact answer there and we go to our calculator and get the approximate and we get approximately 2.154 okay now the direction did just say to solve they didn't necessarily find say find the approximate so if we just say solve we actually want the exact so that would be the best so let's get that log all by itself divide by 4 and that leaves us with the natural log of x equals 5 and now it's logarithmic we need to change it into exponential so take the base the base is e and we're going to write that as e to the fifth that's it so it's e to the fifth which we can plug into our calculator to figure out what that is but we're good without it one more remember when there is no base written it is a common base so this is base 10 so we're going to write this as 10 to the second equals 2x minus 6 and this is a hundred add 6 to both sides 106 and divide by 2 we get 53 not too shabby huh right and now a little application problem where we have an exponential function. The function is given to us here. We just need to plug it in. So we got a laptop computer purchased for $1,500, and that's already in there. Uh, its value is about 60% less, so it's gonna be 0 0.6 to the t. So the function is all given, so this explains the function. The question is, after, uh, well, what is this value after five years? So that's t is 5 so it's always good to identify what that variable is so we just want to know what is the value what is v of 5 so we're just going to plug that in 1500 times 0. 0.6 to the 5 and just type that into your calculator there 1500 times 0. 0.6 to the 5 gives us about $116.64 wow so that means uh, that drops quite a bit. Now the question is, uh, when will it be half of its value? All right, so to find half of its value, well, we're going to take uh, the original value, 1,500, and we want it to be 7, 750, actually. So we're going to make this equal to 750. So we're going to take this function, and we're going to make it equal to 750 equals 1,500 to the 0.6, whoops, to the T. So to solve this up, let's divide by 1,500. And there's our half. So we want to know when will 0.6 to the T, whoops, 0.6 to the t. All right. When will that be uh, equal to half? So if we take the roots, so we're going to swing this around, and we've got the log base 0.6 of 1 half times 
is 0.6. No, sorry. It is T. Okay, so we wrote it in logarithmic form. So there's the exact answer. We want an approximate here. So we're going to have T is equal to the log or the natural log of, uh, what do we have? of one half, okay, to log of one half divided by point, log of point six. So we can go to our calculator and get that. And this is about 1.36. And we're talking years. Here's our solution. All right, well, here we have another function. This is an exponential growth function. The function is given to us. And we have $1.2 billion is going to be put, uh, or was, spent on email marketing in 2007. Okay, and then in 2012... It grew exponentially and now it's 2.1 million. Okay, that's just in. So we've got this exponential growth rate, K, we want to find. P of T is a function for the, uh, the amount spent currently. P naught is kind of a base amount that we need, the original amount. And so we need to plug the some numbers in. And, and T is, a, is going to be the years after 2007. How many years after 2007? So let's plug that in. So P of T is 2.1. That's our current or the new uh, amount, 2.1 billion. So that equals 1.2 billion, which is where it started, e to the kt and t we know is five right because this has been five years from 2012 to 2007 we got five so divided by 1.2 and this comes out to be 1.75 equals e to the k times five or 5k change it to a logarithm so we have the natural log of 1.75 equals 5 times k. And we divide by 5, and we've got our k value. And that gives us about 0.112. So that's our exponential growth rate, 0.112, or about 11.2%. Now, last thing here, we gotta, we got to find the, the actual function, so we found the k value. So this means that our function is p of t equals the starting amount. The starting amount was 1.2 billion. And this is e to the 0.112 and t. There you have it. So there's the final function we're looking for. All right, next one, next page is going to ask us to use this. So 1.2t or e, we'll remember that there. So this is years after 2014. So we're going to find p of 7. Sorry, years after 2007 is what it was. 1.2e to the point 0.112 to the 7. Now let's just go compute that. And that comes out to about 2.7 billion people. Now, the next question is asking when we're going to spend $4 billion in marketing. Well, we're going to spend $4 billion, so that is P of T. So we have 4 is P of T equals, we're going to use our original function, which is right up here. Okay, So we have 1.2 E. The point one one two t. Okay, and we can solve this up. Divide by one point two. 
and let's see what we get. And that is 3.33 equals e to the point one one two t. Now we're gonna swing this base around. Okay. And let's actually, sorry, not swing that base around. I'm going to swing this base around. The base is E. So we're going to take log base E, which is the natural log of 3.33. And the natural log would be the, the power one. And then to solve this, let's finish off by dividing by 0.112. By 0.112. Okay. So we got the log of 3.33 divided by 0.112. And this gives us about 10.7 for T. So that is years. 10.7 years for this to grow. All right. Well, we're going to skip this order for now there. All right. So, um, so not going to be on the test. So we'll leave it at that there. And so there's some solutions that hopefully help. Good luck, work hard, hang in there. Remember those big ideas, especially the idea of changing from a logarithm to the exponent by swinging that base around.